This is Tuesday, November the 24th, and I am looking into Matthew chapter 25, which is part of our Lord's uh, end time uh, lessons, uh, his dissertation concerning uh, some things that will happen in the end times. And in verse 31, when the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory and before him he shall gather all nations and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left. Then shall the king say unto, unto them on his right hand, Come ye faithful of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. And for when I was hungry, and ye gave me meat, I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in, naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee in, and hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Service. Service. We are grown up, or we grow up, with the idea that everything is for me. Everything that uh, I can gather, or I want, or what I like to do, where I like to go, it's all about me. And then somewhere along the way, that individual will hear the gospel of Christ and be born again. And suddenly, he begins hearing about serving. He begins hearing about it's not about him. It's about others. In Matthew chapter 20, Jesus said, The Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but the minister, and to give his life a ransom for many. The word minister means a servant. A servant. In fact, we are uh, considered slaves. That's what Paul considered himself. A slave. So now this person has to deal with the idea that he has to serve. Serve others. Make others more important than himself. Not desiring to be exalted or desiring to be placed in places of prominence or even to be waited upon, but to serve and to wait on others. For some, that's a difficult task. It's a hard task. But that was the life of Jesus. He came to serve, not to be served. And that's how his ministry, that was the center point of his ministry, was serving 
in Romans chapter 12, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy except one to God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world. So we are servants. Servants of the Lord. And we are to serve one another. During this difficult time, we talk about the first responders. We talk about medical personnel. And despite the danger, they go. <coughs> they, first responders will go and, and tend to the individual that has been hurt or needs medical care. They, the hospital, the nurses, doctors are there. They're not there for themselves. They're there for others. They're serving one another. Are they serving the patients that come in? Service. Okay, to know Jesus Christ is to know service. To understand what it means to be a Christian, we must first understand that service is the most important aspect or a very important aspect of the Christian walk. During the Bible days, when a person traveled a distance, they arrived at the, at the house and they were treated as a guest. And one of the duties performed for that guest was to wash his feet, to get the dusty road off of his feet and help him relax. Well, Jesus gave the most uh, powerful example of humility in John chapter 13 when he knelt and washed his disciples' feet and told them to do the same. Serving. Now, serving comes at a cost, dear ones. It's not free. It comes at a cost. And some, <coughs> sometimes that cost is high. Missionaries who go to foreign lands leave their families, <coughs> their extended families, leave all that they know, go into a country, and having to learn that country's culture, how to live, how to survive, how to uh, buy food, uh, medical, uh, dental, all that stuff that we just take for granted, they have the challenge of trying to fit into a society that they did not grow up in. It is very, very difficult. But yet, why do they go? It's because they are called of God to serve, to share the gospel message, to establish works, churches that will honor and glorify Christ and then turn around and do the same. Service. Okay? Service. We kind of take for granted the fact when you go to a store, there's some, there's a cashier that's there that is uh, adding up our bill. We go to a restaurant uh, from time to time, and there is a server, a server. You, just, you know, remember the days when they were called a waitress. But they, now they're called servers, and they come, take your order, go back and give it to the kitchen to cook it, and then they bring it to you. Fill your water, fill your coffee, bring your dessert if you want it. Service. Service. Now this is the thing about ch church work. We rely on people being willing to serve in various positions that makes the church work. Our deacons, our servants, our Sunday school teachers voluntarily will teach a class 
serve. In fact, 95% of all the things that happen around the church is because someone has volunteered to serve in those positions. So I think we need to be reminded that when we serve, when we serve one another, by extension, we're serving Christ. And that what he said here, you don't the least of these, my brethren, you've done it unto me. When you called, when you visited, when you uh, helped me during difficult periods, when uh, when I needed things, you brought things to me. And he said, you've done the least of these, my brethren, you've done it unto me. So, when we serve one another, by extension, we are serving the Lord. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. Father in heaven, thank you for this day. Thank you for your love and your goodness. Lord, thank you for the privilege that is ours to serve one another and serve those around us. We now ask your blessing on the sick that you will heal their bodies. We ask you to guide the doctors as they treat. Lord, there's so many people that are come, are being sick and there are, are folk who have uh, left us. Go on to glory. Lord, we pray for the families that you'll comfort them with your spirit. Help us ever to have a heart for a servant. And I ask your forgiveness for in those times when we fail. And we'll praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.